everyone, Liz Klimek here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. Before we get started, I do want to mention that this is a 360 video, so at any time feel free to take your mouse and just drag the image around. You can look up, down, and all around. Well, summer is well underway, and that means night after night we can see more and more of the summer evening sky. Now spring is my favorite season, but summer brings my favorite sky. So let's go check out what the sky looks like sometime in mid-July around 10 p.m. If we look high up in the southeast, there is a very large triangle in the sky. Now, normally I would poke fun at a pattern of stars shaped like a triangle because it's not very imaginative. Seriously, how many triangles can you make up in the sky? All you need are three stars. There are zillions of them. They're everywhere. But I will concede that this particular triangle is rather special, and I'll tell you why. So first of all, it's made of three very bright stars. Vega, Deneb, and Altair. And so many people notice this specific triangle that it's been given a name, the Summer Triangle. And it's talked about as if it's an official constellation, when it's actually an example of something called an asterism. You can kind of think of that as an unofficial constellation, or a pattern of stars that's just really popular and gets talked about a lot. But each of those stars that I pointed out is part of an official constellation. So if we start with Vega here, Vega, together with some dim stars next to it, forms a little harp called Lyra. Then over here, we have Deneb, which is at the tail end of a cross-shaped constellation called Cygnus the Swan. Imagine a bird soaring overhead with its wings spread wide. Now at the other end of the bird, the head of the bird, there's a star that is called Albireo, and it's kind of in the center of the triangle. And the neat thing about Albireo is it looks like it's one star when it's actually two. There are two stars there orbiting around and around each other in what's called a binary star system. But those stars are so far away that by the time their light reaches us, their light kind of combines and we see it as one star. Then last but not least, we have Altair, which is part of Aquila the Eagle. So perhaps you can imagine another bird soaring overhead with its wings spread wide. But more often than not, people tell me they see a stingray or a manta ray. So I have to say I see that now more than anything else. But this is one of my most favorite parts of the sky because I love stars, I love birds, and I love making music. And here we have birds and a musical instrument made of stars, so what could be more perfect? Now, I can't play the harp, but there's no piano or clarinet constellation, so I'll take it. Now, if you're lucky enough to have access to really clear dark skies, you might notice a hazy band arcing across the sky from horizon to horizon, and it just so happens to cut through our giant triangle here, such that our swan seems to be soaring over a river of star stuff. And that's actually one of the spiral arms of our own galaxy that we live in called the Milky Way. And if you're not so lucky and don't have access to really clear dark skies and you want to look for the Milky Way, you can actually use the Summer Triangle as a guide because the Milky Way cuts right through the center of it. So in this way, you can use the Summer Triangle as a kind of landmark in the sky to help you find some other things. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of a triangle, so to speak, especially in this special format. And I hope to see you in person someday at the South Carolina State Museum's Planetarium, where we use our digital dome theater to recreate what it's like to be under the night sky and to take you to really cool places to and through the cosmos. 
At any rate, thank you so much for joining me here today. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other. And I hope to see you again in some format soon.